Okay, so now here I got some of my casings drilled out. Um, I have all the nickel ones ready to go. I'm just waiting on a my brass to come in. It's been taking forever. Um, I'm making, I think I'm making six sets of this size valve. Some are for rotary trumpets. Some are for like some of the historical reproductions. Like I'm making a horn like this, which has the, this is like a Viennese and Ullmann style horn, but without, uh, instead of the pumping valves, it has these tri-valve, you know, triangular arranged rotors. And these are the exact same size valves um, as my rotor trumpets, except for the knuckle orientation is different. We can talk about that. Um, it's actually pretty cool. You can use the same machine components and all you do is switch, you know, the, the balled out tube in that you put into the casing holes and then you have, you know, completely different instruments rotary section. It's pretty cool. Um, so, but for now we are going to show, so here's actually a, a finished valve or ready to be finished valve. We're going to be making and, uh, brazing in the knuckles for the rotor, which is my favorite part. So actually, just today, I got in my new ball out die for this. This is actually a prototype one, so it's made in aluminum, just to make sure um, I get the bend right. And I'm not exactly sure how many of these size valves I'm gonna be making. So aluminum was a lot cheaper. Um, and if, if it turns out where I make that hundreds of these instruments over the course of my lifetime, then Sure, I'll get it made in steel, it'll be worth it. But this is just a two-piece mold that we're gonna ball out the knuckles in. I have some uh, knuckles that are pre, I bent them earlier. So it's just tube that I've sized to what the knuckle tubing's supposed to be. I bent it, and then we're going to force a steel ball through it while it's in this die. So let's go do that. Okay. Okay, so, excuse my mess here. I've been working a lot this week here cleaned up um so yeah like i said i just have knuckles that i've roughed rough bent i do this in an arbor press um i do fill the tubes but for this particular bend it's not exactly imperative to get it perfect um, i'm working on a way to get a little better just because it makes me happy so i'm just gonna put this in the die make sure our fitment's pretty good i'm just gonna tweak it a little bit i just don't want to put too much strain on the die um, and you, you, you put less strain on the die by bending your parts better. So I'm doing this just in a bench vise, um, because I don't have my ball up press set up. Here, I, I'm in between shops right now, so I'm kind of doing bare bones, just get the stuff done. So, they're correct. It's amazing. I always grab the right ball out of the... Okay, so I got my tools all set. All I'm gonna do, this is just like a, one of those crappy little screwdrivers you get in the socket wrench kits. Um, it just has a nice radius to hold onto the ball. And I'm just tapping it through. Um, like I said, I don't have my, I, I own two ball out presses that have like hoppers that feed it through and are hydraulic have the dovetail vices that just go through you can make you know hundreds of cook crooks an hour but those are still in Kansas City um, so all we're doing is pushing that ball through it's about to it's about to pop out so we use a 422 ball and then I'm following up the 422 uh, the ball in here. I followed them up with a 407 ball, which is 13 30 seconds, so they're pretty cheap. Um, the 422 balls are oddly expensive. I think they're like seven dollars each from the place in California. It's a new die, so it hasn't worn out yet. Yeah, so there we go. Um, we have our Balled out crook. So it's taking the shape of the die. Get the lighting better. And it's ready to be trimmed and put into a casing. Okay, so now we have our, uh, I, I only thing I did since the 
balling out process is I sanded the crooks just real quick um, and I sanded the casing so yeah if if you ever find yourself making valves and you say oh I don't need to sand the crooks before I raise them in and you know the casing machined is fine you will really hate yourself when you finish the valve or really any part for that matter you know, it doesn't have to be a valve, but you know, you finish that part and you go to buff it and then you see the machining lines and it's just like, okay, so now I have to get in here and sand away, you know, parting lines or on the crook. I mean, have fun trying to sand the face of that uh, rotor after you've brazed it in. It's just not going to happen. You know, you're going to try to buff the crap out of it and then you're going to make it look ugly. So yeah, I just do the, I do the crooks. I don't have a, I don't have a thin belt right now for my sanders, so I've just been doing these by hand. I'm only doing, you know, 30 or so crooks total. Um, and then I take the, the casings and I just, you know, my machine finish is really pretty good, so all I have to do is just go on the belt sander with a little arbor and I just brush them off really quick. So, we are going to braze this. So I'm just using, I like a, for silver solder, I like a white brazing flux. Um, they just clean up a lot easier. So, to prep this, all I've done is I've put the casings, or the knuckles inside the casing, and then I've wired this front crook um, to the span that I need it to stay at. So, eventually I'll make, uh, I call them cages for these, but since these are the prototype valves, I'm not going to go to the effort of making cages just in case I end up changing anything. So, I'm just going to spread this flux all over. It's better to use more because the white stuff um, it does tend to burn off a little quicker than the black flux it's a lower temperature flux make sure you get good on the inside and then so these crooks are pretty tight in here and I'm just looking visually you can see that's pretty great I checked it with a machinist square um, before I uh, started so gonna be pretty good and the way I silver solder these is really easy um, so I have my torch which is a propane oh fuck I gotta turn the air compressor okay off. now I have air so this is my torch this is a national torch uh, 2AB it's a propane compressed air torch it's really great it's really cheap to run because you just need an air compressor and a propane tank um, and it gets really hot I braise my bells with the same torch so I'm just gonna light it I'm trying a new torch lighter, and it's kind of crappy. So, My flame was sputtering out because I turned my air compressor off. I didn't want it to come on. So yeah, so then we got our brazed casing. It's that easy. Um, I like to apply the solder from the inside. And as you can see, we got pretty good coverage all the way around. This is a really nice flowing solder. Um, I like a thicker silver solder, just in general, even for smaller parts. Um, this is a... 1 16th uh, size. It's the same size as my uh, bronze rods that I braze with. So, um, yeah, that, that went well. Cool. This will go into a pickle. 
and then we will do the finish work on it. The rest of the work on this is on the lathe, so we're gonna cut the threads. Yeah, I, if you, the, you know, the keen observer will see that there's no threads cut on here for the cap. Um, if you cut threads on the raw casing blanks like I used to, actually, I can show you right here. I used to cut threads on the casing blanks so they look like that. But then my uh, a friend of mine or kind of acquaintance of mine told me that um, the guy he works with had issues when he did that because once you go braze it, and this is when it, before I had actually finished a valve, once you braze it, then um, your threads get kind of burned if you don't have them protected. Even if you have a cap over your threads when you're brazing them, they still get burned. It's actually kind of interesting. So. By doing this, it's kind of a pain in the ass because then you're threading right up against the knuckles there. Um, and you have to be really quick on the stop there. But um, yeah, it turns out really well. Like the threads come out really, really, really nice. So yeah, we're gonna uh, clean up the OD and bring that down to finish size on the back side. And then we are going to bore out the knuckles on the inside, ream out that Morse 3. Uh, first, I'll trim the knuckles before I go in there. but And then we will uh, thread the casing and cut the registers. And then our casing is done. Pretty cool.